So hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to perform a flood detection using Sentinel-1 SAR imagery in Google Earth Engine. So now let's get started. So to perform our flood detection using Sentinel-1 SAR imagery, first we have to import data and followed by we're gonna filter and pre-process the images and calculate the difference to detect the flooding. So study area we're gonna focus is uh, Chennai. So uh, first let us import our global administrative boundary into earth engine. So for that, we defined a variable called admin2 equals to double e dot feature collection FPAO simplified 500 meter 2015 level two. So let me explain about this particular data set here. So this is a global administrative unit layer 2015, the second level administrator. So the global administrative unit layer compiles and uh, disseminates the best available information on administrative units for all countries in the world providing a contribution to the standardization of spatial data set representing the administrative units. Now let me get back to my earth engine. So next uh, we have to specify the date of the flooding. So for this particular study area, the flooding has took uh, between the November 15 to uh, January uh, 1. So we define the variable called before start equals to 2015 November 15 and uh, followed by the very we defined a variable called before end. So we are specifying both start time and end time and equals to 2015 December 10. And next uh, variable after start. So we defined 2015, 12 and uh, December 10 and uh, variable after end, the start time and end time. So we defined uh, 2016, January 23. So in the both the time periods we are specified for before, we have specified both start and end time. And similarly, after flood, we have defined both start and end time for the specific study area. So this defines the date range for the period before and after the flood events. So next we have to select our area of interest. So for our example, we defined a variable called Chennai equals to admin to dot filter double a dot filter dot eq admin name Chennai refers to this particular district called Chennai. So admin here refers to this, this particular data set that is our global administrative boundary layer. So next we defined a variable called geometry equals to Chennai dot geometry. Next to add this uh, district uh, into our earth engine, we define map dot add layer geometry and we define the color for this particular district. So that is Chennai. We define a green color and I'll put the layer name as Chennai. So basically we filter the administrative boundary to select the Chennai district and we have added uh, to our Google earth engine. So next we're gonna uh, filter Sentinel-1 SAR imagery. So now let me explain about the Sentinel-1 SAR imagery. So this particular data set is of Sentinel-1 SAR GRD, C-band synthetic aperture radar ground range detected log scaling. So this particular data set is availability is from 2014 to 2024. So the data set provider is European Union and uh, Copernicus ESA. So to access this particular data, we have to use this set of code here to access this particular code. So description about this data. The Sentinel-1 mission uh, provides a data from dual uh, polarization C-band synthetic aperture radar instrument at 5.40 GHz a C-band. This collection includes uh, S1 ground range detected scenes processed using Sentinel-1 toolbox to generate a calibrated or orthocorrected products. The collection is daily uh, updated daily. The new assets are ingested uh, within two days after they become available. So you can go through this data here. So we have different bands here. So VV represents single polarization, vertical transmit and vertical receive and HH which is a single co-polarization, horizontal transmit and horizontal receive and VV and VH is a dual band polarization, a vertical transmit and horizontal receive and HH and HV is a dual band cross polarization, horizontal transmit and uh, vertical receive. So now let me get back to my earth engine. So to access this particular Sentinel-1 SAR imagery, we defined a variable called collection equals to double dot image collection Copernicus S1 GRD. So it filters the Sentinel-1 uh, ground uh, range detected data for uh, this image. And next we're gonna filter so we're going to filter with the instrument mode here. So the instrument mode here you know, refers to refers to inter, interferometric white. So we have to refer this particular mode here, instrument mode. So for that we define dot filter, double e dot filter dot eq. Instrument mode is IW represents the, in, the interferometric white. And next we're going to filter with our transmitter receiver polarization. 
So the dot filter, double A dot filter dot list contains. So we are choosing this particular transmittent receiver polarization. In that we are specifically selecting VH. So we are selecting the VH polarization, the vertical trans uh, transmit and horizontal receive. And next uh, we're going to filter with the orbital properties pass. So dot filter, double A dot filter dot EQ, orbital properties pass. We are selecting descending. So the orbiter orbit passes we are selecting descending. And next we're going to filter with the, the resolution. So dot filter, double A dot filter dot EQ, resolution meters. So the 10 meter a band we are uh, filtering with the 10 meter band so the resolution is 10 meter and next we're going to filter with our study area so for that we define dot filter double dot filter dot bound geometry so the geometry here refers to a study area chennai so which is our area of interest and last we have to select our uh, vh band that is dot select vh so vh here refers to so you can able to see uh, see that the dual band cross polarization vertical transmit and horizontal receive so VH refers to dual band polarization, vertical transmit and horizontal receive. So if you have, I have mentioned the, uh, the definition for this particular uh, VH polarization. So what is VV and VH polarization? So different combination of vertical and horizontal wave polarizations are used to measure and detect different kinds of phenomena and features. So for example, the Capella global change monitoring uh, uses two different polarization available from Sentinel-1 that is VB vertical vertical and VH that is vertical horizontal. So next uh, we're going to split our data into before and after uh, collections. So we have to uh, select we're going to split our data before flood and after flood. So for that we define before flood uh, collection. So we define a variable called before flood equals to collection dot filter double e dot filter dot date so before start and before end so we defined the dates here earlier here before start and before end and similarly next we're going to focus on after flood collection so we for after the flood collection so we are collecting the images after the flood so for that we defined a variable called after for after collection equals to collection dot filter double e dot filter dot date after start and after end for the start time and end time so next we're going to split the data set into two, into, uh, two collections based on the defined date range. So the processing the images, uh, so we're going to process the image here. So basically this particular uh, code here, we're going to split the data set into two collection based on the defined dates both before flood and after flood. So next we're going to process the image here. So we're going to create a mosaics and uh, clipping to our region of uh, that is our area of interest. So we defined a variable called before equals to before collection dot mosaic dot clip geometry geometry refers to a study area and similarly we defined a variable called after equals to after collection mosaic uh, dot clip geometry that refers to our study area so we're going to create the mosaics of the image in each collection and uh, clip them according to our uh, area of interest so now to add our uh, before flood layer and after flood layer we defined uh, so first we have sent to center of our layer we define map dot center object geometry refers to a study area with a zoom level of 10 and next we defined uh, to uh, add our uh, before flood uh, imagery we define map dot add layer before we set with a minimum value of minus 25 and to a maximum value of 0 and output the layer name as before flood and next uh, we, we define map dot add layer after so after we set a minimum value of minus 25 and maximum value of zero and this is our visualization parameter and output the layer name as after flood so now to calculate the difference between before flood and after flood we defined a variable called difference equals to after dot divide before so we're going to use a both after layer and the before layer and uh, we're going to find the difference so it calculates a ratio of after flood image to the before flood image so next uh, the flood detection and we're, we're going to visualize the layers here so the for flood detection, we define a threshold where uh, if it meets this particular threshold, well, it detects the flooded area in that particular study area. So we define a threshold of, uh, we define a variable called difference threshold equals to 1.25. So now to identify the areas with the flooded pixel, we defined a variable called flooded equals to difference dot difference threshold dot rename water dot uh, self mask function. And to add this layer, we define map.addLayer flooded 
and with the visualization parameter minimum of zero and maximum one and the palette here we are used uh, the flooded areas are indicated in the blue color and output the lay name as flood area so it identifies the flooded area by applying the our threshold value to the uh, to the difference image so uh, now to calculate the areas uh, calculate the flood affected areas in square kilometers uh, we defined uh, print total district area in uh, square kilometers so geometry dot area so geometry refers to a study area and area dot divide so we're going to divide by 10 to the power of 5 here so to uh, to calculate the area in square kilometers and next uh, we defined a variable called stats equals to flooded dot multiply double e dot uh, image dot pixel area dot So we defined a variable called stat equals to flooded dot multiply dot double e dot dot image dot pixel area dot reduce region. So reducer we define double e dot reducer dot sum and geometry refers to our study area and scale that is the resolution that is 10. So max pixel value we set to uh, 1 is to 10 power 10 and the uh, and the tile scale we have specified as 16. So uh, to print this flooded area in square kilometers uh, we define the print flooded area square kilometers double e dot number stat dot get uh, water dot divide by this particular value that is 10 power 5 to arrive the the, the flooded area in square kilometers basically it calculates the and uh, calculates uh, the total uh, flood area in the district in square kilometers so now let's run this code so uh, navigate to this option here run here and click run and now we're going to visualize the result here. So we have uh, four different layers. One is our uh, district layer, followed is before flood, after flood, and this layer represents our flooded area. So now let's just check this out here. Let me turn off this layers here. So this is our district layer of Chennai. You can able to visualize it. So now let me turn on the first layer here, before flood. So you can able to visualize the image here. So this is the before flood image and let me turn on after flood. So I can able to see the difference here. So before flood and after flood. Let me uh, zoom into this part of the area here. So now let me turn on this layer called after flood. So you can able to see the difference here. So let me zoom out. Let me navigate to this particular area here. So now you can able to visualize it. This is the before flood image and this is after flood image. So now you can clearly able to view the difference here. Before flood and after flood. So the black areas are indicating the water uh, water areas here. All the black color here indicates the water waterlogged areas. You can able to see that. So before flood, this was the situation and after the flood, this is the situation. And this particular study area is a highly urbanized area. So uh, mostly uh, due to the uh, poor drainage system uh, in this study area as a result of that uh, most major part of this area has a waterlogged uh, in this study area. So now uh, let me turn on this particular uh, flood areas here. So these are the localities where uh, there is a flood uh, in this study area. So let me see here in the console section. So we have calculated the, the total district area here. The total district has an area of uh, 196.21 square kilometers. And the flooded area has a total flooded area in this particular district is around 50.65 square kilometers of area. So in this video, I have shown you how to perform a flood detection using a Sentinel-1 SAR imagery using Google Earth Engine. So thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel and give us a like.